How you doing, guys? So I'm here today to uh, talk about verifying your OpenStack cloud with uh, Rally and Tempest. A little introduction. I'm Dave Patterson, uh, senior software engineer with Dell. Um, originally, I started uh, in OpenStack working on the Crowbar project. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that project. It was one of the first OpenStack deployers. Been contributing to Tempest and Rally projects since about Juno, so I'm still pretty new at actually you know, submitting stuff upstream. Uh, one of the keys to any OpenStack solution, including ours, is the ability to verify the deployed solution's bits function properly on the defined reference architecture. Typically, this involves a manually scripted smoke test, uh, running the Tempest suite and analyzing the results, and comparing the test results between different stamps uh, and previous re release results. And, uh, originally, Tempest uh, his primary use case was a gating mechanism at OpenStack CI. So when you try to submit some code to upstream repository, Tempest runs against your code. Uh, and if it fails, uh, you're rejected immediately and need to figure out why it was uh, failed. Uh, the current trend in Tempest is uh, being more and more used out in the field as a verification tool. So you have a reference architecture, you uh, deploy OpenStack to it, and run Tempest against it, and see what passes and what fails. Uh, one of my goals has been to improve the usability of Tempest and Rally, uh, so the verification use case is simple and safe uh, to your cloud. Um, in the near future, uh, automated performance and scalability testing were more prominent in my team's objectives, uh, which will lever leverage the benchmarking features in Rally. However, this talk is just about verification side of Rally. A little bit of background. Uh, OpenStack integration test suite um, is what Tempest is. It's a battery of tests for OpenStack API validation scenarios and other specific tests useful in validating an OpenStack deployment. Uh, Tempest is an important part of the DevStack gate job in the OpenStack CI. Uh, you can check out this link here. Uh, it talks about the DevStack, uh, DevStack gate. Uh, beyond verification, Tempest results are also a part of RevStack and DevCore certification process. So right now, if you want to get the OpenStack st uh, stamp of approval, you have to uh, deploy RefStack and run it against your cloud and submit the, the results to DevCore. And if you pass, you'll get the, uh, the certification. Uh, Tempest right now is used for that. I heard today actually that there may be something else used for verification as well, but right now Tempest is the only verification tool they're using. <clears throat> uh, the keys to Tempest is it can run against any cloud, uh, be it DevStack or a thousand node cluster for verifying functionality. Uh, it strives uh, for coverage on all OpenStack uh, features, and coverage is a constant work in progress. So as new features are added, you constantly have to write new tests to provide coverage. Uh, another goal is that uh, Tempest attempts to clean up after itself, uh, but that's easier said than done. Um, and just of note, uh, an important recent uh, directive is that uh, Tempest is trying to get everybody to take over their own tests. So for instance, I believe Nova has completed this where all of the tests are no longer in the Tempest tree, and you're going to be in the Nova tree. And as uh, time goes on, you're going to see that uh, pattern go on. So if you're starting a new project, you're going to have to own your own uh, Tempest integration tests. Here's a basic high-level architecture of Tempest. This is a, a little stale. I typed this off the internet, and I think it's getting a little bit stale, but it's uh, a basic overview of how Tempest works. And now a little background on Rally. Uh, Rally is a tool with a central database that stores various test results from the verification and benchmarking subsystems. Uh, can be configured to test any number of OpenStack deployments. Uh, Rally is made up of four uh, main services with a central database repository, an OpenStack deployment engine, which leverages uh, DevStack or Fuel uh, to simplify deployment. I haven't used that. Uh, functionality yet. We've already had a cloud, so I don't have to worry about uh, deploying it. Uh, benchmarking and profiling engine allows you to create parameterized load on the cloud based on uh, a large repository of benchmarks. Uh, the verification engine, which is using Tempest as the verifier. Uh, it's possible that there will be other uh, OpenStack verification frameworks down the road, uh, but right now uh, it's Tempest is the only one. But there is a layer of abstraction there that they could have, somebody else could come up with some verification tool and it could go into Rally. 
Uh, and lastly is a reporting service for being able to view and output all the stuff that you have run. And a basic high-level architecture of Rally. You can see the four main services, Rally database. So why use Rally to run Tempest? You can download the bits of Tempest and install it and run it on your own. Uh, what you run into is some complications right away, especially if you're supporting more than one deployment, like we do at Dell. Uh, so for every OpenStack deployment, you wish to verify, you need to configure Tempest uh, to test it. And Tempest only supports a single deployment at a time out of the box. To test a different deployment, you have to reconfigure Tempest uh, and save off the configuration file somewhere. And there are currently 278 configuration parameters available in Tempest. So configuration can be a bear. Uh, it's kind of a daunting task. Uh, Tent Tempest doesn't have a central repository to store the results across multiple clouds. So when you execute Tempest, all the test results go into test repository. And that's pretty much so the end of the story. So if you want to uh, compare them to other results, you have to get the other repository. And you have to be able to parse the files in there, which are in subunit format. And, not, and again, it's not an easy thing. Uh, Tempest has no built-in functionality for comparing test results, and Tempest doesn't have any reporting capabilities built into it. What Rally brings to the table, uh, very easy to deploy and configure. Uh, it takes like 10 minutes to deploy Rally. Uh, can support any of number of OpenStack deployments, uh, stores the deployment information and verification test results in a central database repository. This is good because the test results are available forever in the database. Uh, database can be backed up, can be merged with another database. Um, so there's a lot of really good things for having a back-end persistence for your test results. Uh, the results from multiple deployments can be compared and analyzed. Rally has built-in reporting features for viewing and comparing results in a variety of formats, HTML, CSV. Uh, I think there might be JSON as well. Um, and plus there's benchmarking and scalability testing, which I don't really touch in this talk, and I don't have a lot of experience, uh, experience there yet, but uh, I will be shortly. So what I'm going to talk about as far as my demonstration uh, objectives is to install Rally, uh, configure Rally to talk to my OpenStack deployments, uh, and just a, li a little bit about my setup. I have, let's see. Where is VMware? So I have three instances, uh, three um, Fedora instances, two running DevStack for my cloud. So I have two clouds. And then I have a Rally uh, server running on another Fedora instance. So it's just a, so you can get the kind of architecture I was using for the demo. Uh, installing Rally is pretty simple. You just clone the repository, uh, sudo rally install rally sh, and it all happens. That's pretty, pretty simple. Uh, to configure Rally for uh, an existing OpenStack deployment, uh, the easiest way I found is to log into the cloud. And I have that up here. Yep. You log into your cloud, go to the admin uh, project, and then go to, don't know what happened there, sorry. You log into the cloud, uh, go to access and security, API access, and then download this RC file. This has the credentials you need to log into the uh, administration uh, credentials. And it'll also provide you with the um, Keystone URL. So you download that file. And I create a couple of files in Rally uh, with, with each of the deployments I'm trying to, to handle. Uh, and then. So here you get the RC file, and you create the RC files on your Rally node, and then you source that file. So that, in, that engages all those env environmental variables, and then you simply just go Rally deployment create, the name you want to give your deployment, and you say uh, from, env from ENV, which will suck in all the stuff from the environment variables you just sourced from the uh, RC file. You do that for each of your deployments, and they're loaded. 
Next step, if you want to uh, verify and run Tempest against this deployment, you just do rally verify start uh, and specify the deployment, and off it goes. Next, talk about reporting. So once Tempest is complete, uh, you can do a rally verify list. We'll show you a list of all of the, uh, all of the verifications you've ran. In this case, I ran two, uh, one against each of my deployments. Uh, and then you can view them as a HTML file, if you like. So you go rally, rally verify results, uh, the ID of the result uh, that you, you have, uh, specify HTML as the format and the file you want to pipe it to. And you'll end up with something like this. So this is a result. Uh, temp of the Tempest results. Uh, fails are highlighted in red, and you get a stack trace. You know, it's, it's a pretty handy way of viewing your uh, Tempest output. The next uh, is comparing. This is a, a, a feature I added to Rally uh, back a few months ago. So you have run two different uh, verifies against two different clouds, and you want to see what the delta is between them. So I sp specify some similar parameters. I want to see it as HTML and output file. Uh, and this bit here is kind of important threshold. Uh, if you don't have a high threshold, you'll get a lot of deltas because uh, timing is one of the deltas you'll get. So I set my threshold to a thousand percent. So I only want to get you know some drastically different timing results in my comparison. So the results of that will give you something like this here. Uh, and what this is is the uh, comparison report. It'll give you the type of delta. So for instance, this test uh, was removed in the second run. Uh, the value change here was it was uh, failed in the first uh, verification attempt, and it was OK in the second. Um, you can see if there's any new tests that were added since the first verification. And then you can see here where the threshold came into place is some drastically different timing difference. So it's a thousand percent or over difference. So you had a hundredths of a second here. And then you had, because it was a uh, ran OK, and it was a failure here. And I'm guessing it was some kind of timeout if you were to explore it. That's what the comparison report looks like. So from there, uh, another tool I created upstream in Tempest is the ability to clean up after a Tempest run. So when you run Tempest, there's typically, typically uh, quite a bit of cruft left over. Um, so by running this cleanup utility, you can try to restore the deployment to where it was before you did the verification. Uh, you can run the tool in Rally, but it takes uh, a little bit of trickery or a little bit of doing to get there. Because when Rally uh, it creates a deployment, it installs uh, Tempest to this path here. Oops. To this path here, root dot Rally Tempest for deployment, and then this is the deployment GUID. Tempest lives in there. So to use the cleanup tool, it's all in there. That's a full Tempest deployment. You have to go in there, and the first thing you got to do is copy the Tempest conf into Etsy. Uh, then you need to install the requirements that the cleanup will require. And then you need to set your path, Python path uh, to the same path that uh, the Tempest is installed is in. So once that's done, you're pretty much so ready to, to run the cleanup tool. You cd to the command directory under there. And in there is the cleanup tool. So the very first thing you want to do is init the save state, which takes a picture of your cloud. Uh, before Tempest was run. Uh, in this case, we, we did the init save state after, so you have to clean up a lot of the stuff in there. But uh, that file looks like. So that will create a, a file called save state.json. And what this basically is, is all the stuff that you want to keep uh, and not delete. So it's a whitelist of objects that you want to keep, objects and tenants. So this stuff will not be touched by the cleanup tool. Uh, the next thing you want to do is do a dry run to see what you're actually going to uh, clean up. 
and that is clean up dry run. And that will create a file, dry run.json. And there's a lot of objects in here that I was going to clean up, so it's a pretty big JSON file. But I think if I go down the bottom, it's kind of it's more useful. You see the users and tenants down here that it's going to blow away. And you can see they have the test names in them. It's most likely that that test failed. And so the test's cleanup uh, portion didn't, didn't work. So this is a bunch of cruft that's le actually left behind in this cloud. So once you're satisfied with the dry run, you say, I'm comfortable with deleting all of these objects. You just run cleanup without any arguments, and it goes and blows away all of those objects, and you're done. So right now, um, some future stuff I would like to do around this is currently Rally has the responsibility of configuring and running the Tempest tests. These concerns should actually be down at the Tempest level. So there should be a Tempest CLI that Rally just calls to do this. So the Tempest CI should have things like Tempest config create, Tempest run uh, with some arguments, and Tempest cleanup with some arguments. And uh, Rally shouldn't have to worry about it. It should just be able to call these APIs. And it's not working right th that way right now. Rally's actually doing that work. So adding these features will not only improve Tempest in general, but will provide a much more loosely coupled integration points uh, for other projects like Rally. Uh, and another feature I'm working on, which I didn't get to this cycle, is uh, verify import. So y if you had Tempest results that were ran just by running Tempest out in the field, you could import them into Rally and still use all the Rally tooling for comparing the results. So other stuff I'm currently working on is uh, the Tempest CLI. I got partially through this release, and I hope to spend some time on it soon and get that uh, into Liberty. Um, and if anybody's interested in getting involved, you know, please feel free to reach out to me. On, uh, you, know, you can see these two blueprints, the Tempest CLI and uh, Rally Verification Import are two things I'm working on. And uh, I would love to get some assistance there. Uh, here's some more info. Uh, on where you can find links to Tempests and Tempest documentation, Rally, um, downstream Red Hat configuration script, which is very handy if you're going to deploy Tempest without Rally, because it will greatly uh, reduce the complexity for creating your Tempest.conf. So when I when I have to install Tempest without Rally, I I always use this tool. Even if I'm using you know head Tempest, I use this uh, config.tempest config underscore tempest.py script. And that's, uh, that's pretty much so it. Do you guys have uh, any questions for me? And if you do, please use the mic, because this is being recorded. Is there any plans to plug this into something like Jenkins so that you can continuously test yeah, I'm not. Sh I'm not sure about that. I'd have to ask Boris. Boris is the uh, the leader of the the rally team, and I'm not sure that's on, that's yes, on the roadmap. Anybody else? Nope. I guess that's it. You guys get ten minutes of your life back. Thank you. Thank you.